In the final act of Bloodborne, we're told to seek the Nightmare Newborn. This is soon after revealed to be a child named Murgo, taken from the Tumerian Queen Yarnum, whose parenthood has been usurped by a great one, the succubus in the Nightmare of Mensis called Murgo's Wet Nurse. Upon our arrival at the Wet Nurse's Lunarium, we see a carriage up ahead and can hear Murgo's cry. As we approach, a cutscene begins to play in which the succubus makes her appearance, gently enveloping the pram, keeping Murgo safe but unseen. From here, the encounter with Murgo's wet nurse begins proper. Thinking about what we've seen here, there's very little to take in with regard to what exactly happens between Murgo and the succubus during these moments. However, today we're going to take a look at something that's never been seen before. Let's go back further into Bloodborne's development history to find out how this important moment changed over time and see what we might be able to learn from the differences along the way. Unsurprisingly, the oldest iteration to exist of the cutscene is nothing more than a placeholder. And in fact, the entire concept of the Nightmare Newborn had not yet been implemented. Additionally, the wet nurse herself was simply called Succubus at this point, as she existed here as nothing more than her namesake, a demon sustaining Mikolash's unending nightmare. Moving forward from here, the concept we find in the final version of Bloodborne immediately becomes more apparent. However, what we see is also dramatically different. Unlike in the finished product, the hunter appears in this cutscene. Seen approaching and looking directly into the pram, the hunter is ambushed by the succubus from behind and comically dashes out of the way. The way the Great One carefully takes Murgo into her hands, carefully demonstrating the newborn's tiny, unseen form, holding it up to the sky, is in vast contrast to the vague implication of the final version. The wet nurse then seems to take the child to her chest before finally acknowledging the hunter. This design would be iterated upon a number of times before changing to what is seen in the final game. Thus, the next version of this cutscene shows many subtle, albeit important, changes. The animation remains wholly unchanged, but the colour correction and additional graphical effects create a much more cohesive whole. With the most dramatic difference being the dark glow appearing across the ground as the wet nurse first takes Murgo into her hands, and the subtle flourish as the newborn is taken to her body.
From this point onwards, this cutscene would be trimmed back progressively until reaching what we eventually see in the finished version of Bloodborne. Let's take a look at how this next iteration shows a far more concise version of the previous one. The hunter's quick retreat is no longer shown, cutting immediately to the Great One reaching into the baby carriage. Rather than holding Murgo gently in her hands for a moment, the succubus immediately takes the newborn into herself while remaining hunched over the pram the entire time. As before, a dark glowing effect appears both on the ground, and then emerging from the wet nurse herself during the process. We now have one final iteration to see, and this one is of course the closest to the end result, though still dramatically different. Unlike the end result, in this version we still get to see the hunter on camera approaching the carriage. However, the wet nurse now falls from above as we have seen in the finished product. The most dramatic difference here is the extreme impact with which the Great One lands, slamming down upon and absolutely obliterating the carriage, as opposed to the more protective and gentle approach from the retail release. And so this brings us to the end of these unseen versions of Murgo's Wet Nurse's introductory cutscene. I found it fascinating to see how this particular moment went through so many changes throughout the course of Bloodborne's development before arriving at this eventual point. And I hope you might have found this a little interesting too. I'd like to add that I'm live on Twitch streaming every weekday, so if you'd like to come along and share your thoughts, you can find a link to my Twitch channel in the description below. In the meantime, make sure you're subscribed here to keep up with my work as I have so much to share going into the future. Leave a friendly comment below and hit the like button if you have a chance, and either way, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.